Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. And we are back to review Season 2, Episode 6, The Sound of Thunder of Star Trek Discovery. This was a great episode, I thought. This was really, really good. This still is, no Spock. Still no Spock. But, but I but, really enjoyed it. And there was no thunder. There was, well, there was, yeah, there was. It was rumbling, a little rumbling. No, like when, when the, the Ba'ul... No, it's, it's, it's Goa'uld. No, it's Ba'ul. You're right. Ba'ul. Never mind. <laughs> when they made that noise, yeah. that was pretty intimidating kind yeah. of thunderous noise. I liked it. So this was pretty much a beam down mission. Yeah, it was good. And I liked it. Overall, I liked the episode. Um, a huge arc, a huge episode for the Kelpians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just found out a few episodes that Saru uh, lost his little uh, fear tendrils. What do they call them? Yeah, they're, they're his fear ganglions. Fear, yeah, and um, and we realized that they realized that that's not that doesn't mean death. It means a new stage in their in their in their adult development. Development. Yeah. yeah. And now, just a, a few episodes later, bam! They had a, a huge episode at, at his right. home world, and now they're all they've all been circumcised. So it's, uh, <laughs> right. and they can shoot. Poisonous, uh, or, or maybe not darts, poisonous, but darts yeah. from their <laughs> ganglia. That's, that's pretty badass. Yeah. So, so the big reveal is that the uh, the Kelpians, they were in in history the predators of the ba Bahul, oh, Bahul, who yeah. are, who then who kind of uh, neutered them in a way by yeah. or or neotenized them a little bit in a way <laughs> by making them by making them being per perpetual adolescents and killing them before they could mature and become predators right. and convincing them that that's them. death right right now the baul i mean they they literally looked like somebody plucked them right out of an asian horror movie mm -hmm. right? yeah, a little bit, yeah they're yeah. like covered in tar you know they yeah. were very creative i really i love the look and how different they are um, from uh, conventional aliens but I didn't understand them. I swear, they were hard to I understand. understood thirty percent of what they yeah. were saying. Maybe I, how do maybe, you miss that? Maybe you... Saru can only understand thirty percent of what they said. <laughs> but how does that happen? I mean, don't you like? Well, I don't know. You think you'd, you'd yeah. have some sort of test? Hey, focus group, can you understand what this guy's saying? Yeah, at least give us Come subtitles. If it, if it yeah, right. Sound... Exactly. Just give us subtitles. That would be good. And I so I had an idea, alternate Jay. theory during the show. Yes, I, thought, I loved it. I thought I would have bet money you were right. Yeah, I thought I that swear. maybe the Ba'ul were the mature version of the Kelpians. Kelpians. Elite class. Because the Kelpians, they just, they're just taken. You don't see them dead. Right. They just vanish. They could have been the Ba'ul, and, they, and there was a more benign relationship there. That's true. But they didn't know it was the more... But the, the first thing you think of is that they're just killing them before they evolve to their predatory form. I, I, you know, I think about, like, even the way that the... They moved was very much like a horror movie. You know, yeah, it was good. I like supposed it, to be really creepy. Now, one thing I noticed with pretty much all science fiction, you see a weird alien, you're like, how do they develop technology with those hands? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like they got these drippy, you know, gigantically fingernailed, crazy horror hands, and they're like, you know, <laughs> components. It's just it's kind of funny when you think about it. You know? I, I, I thought the same thing, Jay. Maybe they've got their control system in the in the tar, and they're they're doing stuff to have the robots control right. the yeah. ship or do whatever. But they have but, prehensile appendages we didn't see. Yeah, maybe they do. <laughs> Who knows? Well, maybe they take a shower and dry off before yeah, they, like, they, they, they do like, heavy hey, engineering. Hey, hey, hey. Their voice, like, hey, how you doing? You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's all the tar. All right, other big reveal in this yes. episode. Not that big, but uh, we got a closer look at the Red Angel. Yeah, and that was cool because was we saw and they saw it was a guy in this advanced spacesuit, basically. Th that, that was going like this. <laughs> you know? I am floating. Yeah, because when you, when you see the Red Angel, it's through uh, the Kelpian Saru's eyes, who's apparently got really good vision. Yeah. And you could see uh, some... A predator vision. Some, now. Yeah, right. You could see some kind of mechanism. You could see more detail. It had a helmet and on. Jay, and yeah. Jay pointed out, that's a guy, it's a guy in a suit. And, uh, and it turns out it's it's probably a time traveling dude with awesome tech. I can't wait to see oh, the we technology. Drop it? So all right, there's a fan spoiler. But this is a, this is just a theory. This is a fan theory. We didn't come up with this. We read this online. Oh boy. And we we were talking about this before this episode. And at the very least, what was revealed in this episode is consistent with this theory. It doesn't prove it, but the theory is that the Red Angel is Spock from the future. And so we know now pretty much that the Red Angel is somebody in a suit from the future. It could be Spock. Yeah. It could be somebody else, though. There's a lot of people but out there. But what version of Spock? Right. And I was thinking that yeah, it, which, uh, it would be reality. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's Pike from the future. Yeah, you never know. Who knows? It could be anybody. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be Spock, but... Uh, but but he did. But Spock had a relationship with this red as angel a kid. as a kid. Yeah. So it does, that's why the people yeah. thought it was Spock. Once again, man, 
they lowered that Spock pinata down. <laughs> it's like, you know, like. All like, right, but the previews do suggest we're going to see Spock yeah. next time. They've done it before. If they, yeah, I think that this is the last chance that they have of. Wait, they, they actually said next time on, on Discovery and they showed Spock? Wait a yeah. second. Do that? Hold on a second. This has gotten so bad, this Spock <laughs> thing, that one of our, one of our friends in a, in a uh, person that watches the show, you know, Rob Palmer? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's Carl literally Pons. spamming me on Facebook saying, ha, they didn't, they're not going to show Spock. They're not going to show him. He's not gonna. I think Rob and I are starting to agree now that they're probably going to have shot Spock show up literally at the last episode. Right. Oh God, yeah. So I don't, I don't trust these bastards at all. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. Can we week. trust these bastards? <laughs> but, I, you know, this episode, if I were to wave my magic wand, mm -hmm. I would take out the, the voiceover, right? I didn't like the voiceover stuff. That's not Star Trek to me. Voiceover. Josh oh yeah, 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 yeah. We don't like the early in the episode. Saru was having Saru a voiceover. Doing a voice ah, big deal voiceover. No, it didn't bother, bother me, but it is it is a weird little weird for Star Trek. It's not Star Trek. It's just it didn't, didn't feel yeah, right. I have an open mind. F whatever. Yeah, open mind. Yeah. It's Star Trek people. Um, so it, you know, it it it, it, de it definitely had. There was almost crying. There was almost crying in this episode. <laughs> but I but I will give them an episode without tears because there really yes. we didn't see any. Um, and, and, and I think Michael showed a little bit more emotional range in this episode. Yep. So they clearly listened to us from right before the episode. Yes, exactly. To this one. <laughs> from an hour ago. Um, now and what, the Red Angel from the future told them, no, direct it like, like this and yeah. whatever. Less but, crying, more emotional range. Now, another thing that happened early on in the episode, uh, the doctor mm -hmm. that came back, I forgot his name. E. Culver. Yeah. Col yeah, he, something's wrong, right? He's not feeling right. And Saru gave him some words of encouragement, but something's not right with him. Well, he's uh, well. He, it isn't his body; it's a newly created body. It's a little bit of a scar that he clearly had some kind of emotional attachment. But he to. wouldn't feel weird. He would feel energized. He would feel yeah, good. But, you would think, but he, he's in a yeah, brand new. But that feels weird. But you're right. They are sort of suggesting that there may be something there. Oh, he didn't want. He didn't want Stamets to touch him. Mm -hmm. No. You know, he pulled away. Like, yeah, they're 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 setting a stage for something to go on there. So we'll see where they bring that. And again, man, Pike, he was a kick-ass captain in this yeah. episode. He's call I'm sitting there thinking, okay, you're semi-breaking General Order 1. Mm -hmm. you, you're, faced you're in the gray zone, but they, they said yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, they did. But, but you're embrace in a situation the gray, right? where Steve, embrace the gray. Yeah. <laughs> he's, got, he's got two alien species, one dominating the other, and they're like, the shit was hitting the fan. And he, you know, of course you would expect this. He keeps his cool and made good decisions. I'm like watching him thinking like, I wouldn't be thinking as fast as him. Like he, you know, mm -hmm. it was very, very captain-y of him to not, yeah. not get It's the competency porn that we love about Star Trek. Yep. And we got it this episode uh, from a lot of, a lot of quarters. Right. It was good. It was a good solid episode. And yep. I'm a little, I'm not sure what to think about this, the new uh, Encyclopedia Galactica they got. Yeah. The, the download mm -hmm. from that weird uh, planet Shit-sized alien yeah. that that killed itself. Now they've got all of her. They, it's yeah, experiences. it's another and one now of those things. It's a database. It's, it's a database. another one of those things where they they write themselves plot-wise into a corner because they've got this but incredible source of data. They, they got an out. I mean, it's they a, do. It's, it's a slice. It's a of the slice. Galaxy. So they could. I think it's actually a, li a brilliant plot device when you think about it. Yes, because I like I, it, I like it. You always need a mechanism of discovery, right? Mm -hmm. You need your characters to have some way to find information you need them to have in order to push the plot forward, and there you go. Yeah. We have this thing, whenever we need them to have information, it's there. When we don't want them to have information, it's not there. Yeah. This is a plot writer's dream. Okay, let's see what they do with it. Don't, don't but they, they, can't they have to, they, the they can't often. abuse they it. They can't abuse it. They can't you can't see it. it every episode, but once in a while, it's like, hey, let's go to the inside. Encyclopedia Galactic. You yeah. know there would be there would be thousands of Federation scientists yeah, and studying they are. that, and they'd have, they'd have artificial intelligences and studying it to try to glean as much as they could. They said it would take centuries yeah. to go through it. What it's pretty cool. Mind. We what need one of those. Mind. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what if I get one of those? But overall, <laughs> I, I enjoyed the episode. I felt I felt like you know it had a, pro, a, a, a the plot was moving forward yeah. pretty much at all times. We got our trek on with this yeah. episode. Yeah, it yeah. was it yeah. was intriguing. Yeah. With, with very few things that happen right that, you know, not, not that many things rub me the wrong way. So. Yeah, so one, one of my measures is how often am I taken out of the episode and thinking meta, like, oh, why did they do that or does that make sense? And I didn't get that this yeah, episode. Yeah. I wasn't taken out. Last episode I was taken out every now and then and it does break up the flow of my enjoyment of the show. This episode gets high marks for not doing that. I was right. in the episode the whole time. True. So, and don't forget, we had a little bit of extra 
Arium, the cyborg. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Cyborg. <laughs> so she's actually getting she's lines now. Yeah, and everything, man. which oh, is cool. She's, I got a crush on. We her. need to we need to have <laughs> like an episode that revolves around her, at least a Star Trek short. I've I've, I, I've, I've like heard it. I've heard that they're gonna do an episode yeah. where they'll delve much more deeply in, into her character. A short. She's perfect for a short. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but whatever. All, all, all whatever. the secondary characters on the bridge, we barely know them, and they yeah. seem interesting. I want to yeah. know more about. I'm them. I'm starting to like the crew. I like I like the the rhythm on the bridge. Um, so I, I think we all agree that these beam down missions are, are you listening, pay attention. These beam down missions, that's what Star Trek fans want. We want the, those types of plot lines, you know, like let, let's mm -hmm. no crying, beam down missions, <laughs> phaser fights, yep. cool aliens, plot twists, Star yeah, Trek. I, I like it. It's like a, it's like a one off episode, but they have a little arc plot. Yeah, yeah. we well, push the arc it, plot. Push the arc a little bit, push but the have an interesting plot. development. They, yeah. they totally did the whole thing with, with the, 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 but, Kelpian, you know, the Kelpian home world. And at the end, we find out a really interesting tidbit about this Red Angel. So, it's, so they'll keep doing that. But we haven't had, have we had like a, a big arc episode? It seems like it's been, we've had like these Well, they're all, they're all pushing the arc. A little bit. If anything, Bob. Yeah, I mean, a full, like a full arc episode. Well, yeah, yes, yes, when Spock's mother came aboard. Okay, mm -hmm. that was right? that, that was definitely that an was arc episode. Arc. But I, I, I like the non-arc episode yeah. ones. I, they, to me, they're, they're appealing. Is this the best episode this season so far? Uh, mm, yeah, so was it better than the other Beam Down episode where they went to the planet that was like, yeah. people were saying That safe? was pretty good, too. Yeah, no, I, th I think I like this one more because I like Saru so much. Yeah, Saru's so, a good you know, character. His, his, his race is cool, like his, his origin is cool. So there was a lot of, uh, for me to think about when I was watching it. So I, yeah, it's my favorite episode yeah, so far. Yeah, right. top one or two. And next week looks good. Yeah, well, that's the job of the previews. Yeah, to yeah but did you see that, see that, <laughs> that, that octopus techno thing that was right out of the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, right out I did. of the <laughs> Sentinels from the Matrix. Yeah, yeah, I can't absolutely. wait to see that. That was a hunter seeker if I ever yep, saw him. Absolutely. Without a doubt. All right, so next week, be back, same time. Same channel. Same, same truck time. Same truck <laughs> time. Oh, boy. <laughs> we won't be here. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks, guys.